So welcome to a new arc of the Monogatari series and this is of course Koi Monogatari. So we just finished up Uni Monogatari, that's it, which was a arc that was supposed to be surrounded um surrounding Shinobu and at the beginning for the most part it was and then it turned into a Hachikuji arc and I'm not complaining because what a heartbreaking but stunning arc that was. We got to see a lot a lot of uh, Shinobu lore and we got to see a new type of entity which seems to be like some kind of mediator for or not mediator but like almost like police for the oddity to make sure that they're working the way that they're intended to work. Uh, we also saw a bit of Ogi and how she kind of compared herself to that darkness right. She seems like uh, she said that she's gonna be what punishing all the liars or whatever which is exactly what the darkness is doing, so I don't know what's gonna be there. Obviously a lot more mystery to Ogi once again. Not like we needed that, but hey, here it is. Um, and at the end of the arc, it became more so a Hachikuji arc than an actual Shinobu arc, because Hachikuji did end up, you know, getting over the thing that was making her an oddity, the thing that was holding her back from moving, moving on to the next world, so she decided, you know what, I've already dealt with it, I'm not gonna relapse back, and... I am going to take my leave from this world, which, I mean, you guys did say that it was actually, you know, uh, that it was actually foreshadowed quite a bit in a few of the other arcs, but, you know, you always brush it off when you're, think when you're watching it uh, for the first time. I never actually thought that it was going to come to this. I thought that, oh, she's just a roaming ghost now. Great. Um, but yeah, eventually all good things have to come to an end, including Hachikuji's presence. That was... Oh, what a harsh, harsh scene, man. Oh, they really, they got me with that one. But now it's time to move on, uh, for us to move on as well, not just Hachikuji, and get on to the next arc, which is going to be, I believe, a Senju Gahara centered arc. At least, but judging by the title of, I think it's called Hitagi End. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what it's going to be about. I don't even know if it's actually going to end up being about Senju Gahara, judging by the fact that some of the other arcs have been about completely like other people, centered on other people than the uh, name actually suggested. So I just hope that Senju Gahara gets a bit more screen time. I feel like she gets such little screen time compared to some of the other girls. So I hope she gets uh, she gets more of it. Um, but I didn't know why she gets little screen time is because she is such a strong, she has grown to be such a strong person that she usually doesn't battle that many um, problems as a lot of the other girls who are a lot more mentally um, weak, I should say. Or, yeah, I guess so. A susceptible to, like, succumbing to some kind of problems. So, maybe that's why Senju Gahara doesn't get as much screen time. But still, it's gonna be... I'm 100% certain that this is gonna be a great one. Also, it's called Koi Monogatari, which I hope means that we're gonna be seeing a bit more love between Araragi and Senju Gahara. That would be great, because that's some of my favorite scenes were always uh, their interactions. So, I hope we get to see more of that. Anyways... I guess there's only one way to find out. So, if you want to watch this, Uncut and Unblurred, it's going to be on my Patreon, which is down in the description. And without further ado, let's go into Koi Monogatari, episode 1. Okay. Okay. Why is Kaiki's team playing? That's why. Sounds a bit different. Yeah! Please be good. Like, please be a happy story. Please guarantee you the legitimacy. No! This is gonna be another Nadeko arc, Nadeko Medusa arc. Oh no. I can't with another, I can't with another unreliable narrator. I can't. Let's hear the opening. Whoa, this looks sick. This is sick. Whoa! I love that. 
the visual style of this is so cool. Deoxys? Oh! Oh! Gorgeous! Why is Nadeko here? Oh! Oh! Okay. Okay, first of all, Hitagi and part one. Gorgeous opening, but, um, and the song also really, really, really cool, really chill, 90s <laughs> uh, song, really, really cool. Um, anyways, what I was gonna say about, I was like, why is Nadeko here, right? Um, we saw Gaen, or not that we saw, we know that Gaen gives Araragi the talisman of the snake god. Uh, at some point, with the snake, a snake god's body, right? So, I'm guessing it's gonna be in this arc, because she hasn't given him that talisman yet as of the end of Unimonogatari, but we know that she gives them to him really, really soon. Um, because uh, Ugi did say that Araragi received that talisman a few months ago from Gaen, and she said that at the end of October. So, Right now, we are about two months from that. So, it should be around this time where Gaian gives Araragi the talisman with the snake god's body. So, I'm guessing it's gonna be in this arc. That's why we saw it in the opening. My guess. Whoa, that's sick. First of January. What? Wait. Which year? So is it 2007? <laughs> this guy! Looks like a vampire, man. I swear. Like an old school vampire. Like a Dracula. <laughs> Easier to do that than to confess that you were lying. <laughs> 
I don't know who she is. Okay. Oh, I think he does know it's Senjogahara, right? He's saying I don't know who she is because of the name, right? Senjogahara? I think? Kaiki. If her hair is short, then this is 2007. ロビーというのでは曖昧で空港内の喫茶店かどこかで会えないかしら。わかりました。では、そうしましょう。店に入ってから店名を電話で知らせればいいのかしら。ええ。空港内の喫茶店すべてをめぐって必ずこちらからお
Checks out. She's a goddess right now, though. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Why are you trying to guilt Chipper so much? Damn, you really trying to guilt Chipper. Oh, just a local goddess. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Roughly. Now she's trying to get Chip him back. <laughs> Look at these two. What a crazy conversation. Both trying to get Chip one another back and forth. If only it were this easy in this one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's so cool. Oh, she's so cool. Deified? Mm. Of course, yes, of course you know it. Yeah, that's how I took that phrase. Yeah. 
生だ2年生よ例会議あなたわざと言っているの本当に心当たりがないのかしら戦国なでこという名前に<笑>あの町お前の住むあの町に住んでいる中学生だということはつまり俺が去年騙した中学生の中の一人というわけだな厳密には違うわいやだ戦国なでこはいやあなたの被害を直接受けたわけじゃないいやあなたの被害者から。いや、シューズ・ビクトム・ビュー・ウィクトム、だって。間接的な被害という形になるのかしらね。うん。サミによる連鎖倒産のようなものか。どうかな。I mean, yeah, kind of. 連鎖的に被害を生むから、個人の範囲に収まらない社会役なのだよな。うん。うん。お客様。すいません。この子がオレンジジュースをこぼしてしまいました。What a guy! What a girl as well! Look at her! My girl! She's so cool. Dude! Why do you say it like that? This guy. I'm sure you can. Not I will, yeah. Mm. I mean, that's fair. It's a god. This is gonna be expensive. 100,000 in a lump. That's an easy way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What? She. Whoa. Ha.
10万円はとりあえず手付けということにして失礼のない額を用意するつもりよさすがに命がかかると必死だな、mm. それとも恋人の命が大事 I think so It's actually really in endearing seeing her like this Seventy four days. So it's middle of March. I mean, I, I think that just was supposed to like show that Senjo to Senjo Hara the biggest her biggest taboo and her biggest like uh, insecurity or not insecurity but like trauma and everything like that stems from her body, right? And um, her actual like physical uh, intimacy with anyone. And I feel like her saying that is basically saying I would there's nothing in this world that I wouldn't do for him, right? Um, which is I mean that's that's fucking insane. I love Senjo Hara so much. One thing that I absolutely love, and I feel like it should be a given, but in anime it's usually not a given, and I absolutely love, or in media in, uh, in general, it's just, it's just absolute devotion to one person. <laughs> that's one thing that I absolutely love um, in Senjo Gahara, is just how devoted she is to Araragi and only Araragi, right? That's one thing that I absolutely love about her. Um, that's what makes her so, to me, such an incredible character. Or, or at least that's one of the traits that makes her so good. One incredibly interesting thing is, she said that Hanekawa is right now abroad looking for Meme. So I'm guessing something happened. Unless, I mean, it could be one thing that could happen is that Araragi told Hanekawa about what's gonna happen with Nadeko, and that's why she went abroad to look for Meme. That, that's also a possibility um, that she's trying to save Araragi as well uh, with Meme. I don't know, maybe. Um, but okay, interesting. And the last thing is this is all from Haiki's POV. So I wonder how many of these shots, like he looks really cool in some of the, sho some of the shots. I wonder how much of it is because of, it's, it's because of his POV, right? Um, also, I wonder, uh, I hate the fact that he stated at the beginning that he is an unreliable narrator because now everything that's happening here is que making me question it, whether or not this is exactly, uh, if I'm to take this at face value or not. It seems like here what's happening should, is pretty like straightforward and I, Hope that this I can take this at uh, face value, but I guess we'll see. Okay, it is because of that, okay.
ガエンスルガウォーガエントウェだすこい。わいわい。おれでディエンドディエピソード ?OK。New ending. I'm gonna leave this one in the YouTube reaction as well. My first reaction to it. Without the audio, obviously. Are these Claris? I don't know actually. Are they? I don't think so. Interesting. Wait, let me look up. Oh, actually, there's a preview. Fire Sisters. <laughs> Will you? Oh. Is that reliable? <laughs> oh, okay. Ponytail. <laughs> That's cute. Sent off to commentaries again. Yes, you are fire sisters. Oh, that was that was a fantastic episode. Let me before I go into it, let me just look up who's singing the ending because it doesn't seem like it's the same singer as the uh, other ending of this season. Uh, it should be the last ending. Snow job by Luna Haruna and Marina Kano. Oh, okay. So it's the the two singers that sang. Okay, that sang. The first one and, well, the third one, or I guess the second ending. Okay, so both of the singers that sang the endings of this season uh, are singing this one. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I just heard two vocals and I thought it was maybe Clarice. It's not. Okay. Um. Wow, what a fantastic episode. So, before I forget, the thing that I wanted to say at the end here with Kaiki, it seemed like... Uh, and this was just a team in, like, yesterday in an episode of Orb that I was watching. Um, It seemed more so... No, not so much that he was, um, you know, thinking of whether or not it's worth taking that deal. It was more so him trying to justify himself taking the deal, which it's a bit of a difference, right? He was trying to, I think he was going to take the deal. He just needed a reason, an excuse. Um, maybe not necessarily uh, to make it worth it, but just an excuse for to himself uh, to kind of take it, right? That's kind of how it uh, felt like. It kind of felt like he was uh, pulling at straws, you know, uh, trying to find... There is a reason to do it, an excuse to do it, and now he finally found it to get closer, possibly get closer to Suruga, right? Who is a niece to Gaien Izuko, who is a sister to Gaien Toe. 
So that's interesting. Uh, I wonder if Gain Toei is going to be an important character in any way, shape or form. I wonder what even... Like, I wonder what there is to the Gaian bloodline, right? Because up until now, we know about, like, Suruga, but she... The, the fact that... Oh, maybe, actually... I feel like... I don't remember... How did Gaian's... Because I believe Gaian's mom got the uh, Rainy Devil, right? How did she get it? I, I think it was mentioned. Uh, if it wasn't mentioned, don't spoil it. If it was mentioned during Gaian's arc, or not Gaian's arc, Suruga's arc, then um, le remind me. Because I'm sh I'm pretty sure they mentioned her getting it somewhere. Maybe that has something to do with her family, with like the Gaian bloodline. I don't know. Anyways. Um, but so many news, so many like new uh, lore drops about... Obviously, this, we moved forward a few months in time, so that means a lot of things are gonna happen in that time. Hanekawa is somewhere abroad looking for Meme, as I said, and as also Kaiki kind of confirmed, she seems to be looking for Meme to help out um, Araragi, and I guess also Senju Gahara, but like Araragi, you know. Um, and also, I love... Uh, I'm gonna keep saying it, but I absolutely love seeing Senju Gahara actually be, you know vulnerable like this uh when it comes to Araragi being like you know what I genuinely I'm gonna I'm prepared to give you anything anything and everything if you just help out Araragi I don't even care what happens to me just help out Araragi right um and that is one thing that I absolutely love about her man ah but yeah it was a fantastic episode uh, I love to see uh Senju Gahara again I hope I hope that she's gonna end up playing a big role in this <laughs> judging by the title of the of the arc she should but i guess we'll see also i hope that the unreliable narrator isn't too unreliable but just the fact that he said that he's gonna be unreliable makes me uneasy because now i'm gonna question everything but i don't know i guess we'll see uh it's no use speculating what is reliable what isn't because at the end of the day i mean it, it's it's a 50 50 uh so <laughs> until it's actually revealed it's no use speculating about it too much but I'm excited to see where this art goes. I feel like it's going to be a fantastic one. Uh, also, I don't mind them skipping uh, ahead in the future. I feel like it's actually really interesting. Because everything that they're saying here makes sense, right? It makes sense. We know how it came to be. It just feels like it's a continuation of Otori Monogatari. And uh, um, yeah, it doesn't feel too confusing. Yeah, it's just a continuation of it. Which is really cool. I really like it. But it's going to be cool to see where it goes. But anyways, I'm going to end this one here. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Peace.